Okay, well, Paula might be running late. I don't know. Oops. Hopefully she'll she'll be here soon. Let's. Uh, yeah, yeah. I came around on one fifty two, but um, okay. Let's. Um, why don't we call the meeting to order and uh, start with the pledge of allegiance. Okay, thank you for being here tonight, everyone. Uh, the first thing that we will do is take public comment. If anyone has something that they would like to discuss with us that's not on the agenda, if, if it's a matter that's already on the agenda, of course, you don't have the agendas, do you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all, all right. Um, so, but does anyone have uh, any public comment at this time? The San Benito County Pacheco Stormwater District welcomes your comments. Each individual speaker will be limited to a presentation total of three minutes. When addressing the committee via Zoom, please phone or in chambers, please state your name and county in which you reside. For the record, please address the, the district as a whole through the, through the trustee. If a participant via Zoom, select participant tab, click the raise hand icon. If you are using a phone, please press star nine to raise your hand. When your turn arrives, you will hear that you have been unmuted. If you're participating in person at the chambers, please com complete a speaker card identifying the item on which you wish to speak and provide your completed card to the clerk prior to consideration of the item. Speaker cards are available on the table at the entrance to the chamber. In chambers, please approach the podium and state your name and the county in which you reside for the record. You have three minutes. Via Zoom, if you have been unmuted, please state your name and the county in which you reside for the record. You have three minutes. Thank you. So do we have any public comment at this time? Any public comment via Zoom? Okay, it doesn't sound like it. We, well, we do. Okay. Anthony Batello, you've been unmuted. Anthony, you can unmute yourself now. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, Anthony Patello, San Diego County. Uh, I didn't want to fight the traffic at Union and 156 to get across there this time of night. So uh, on Zoom. Uh, 
anyhow, uh, had an offer to RMA uh, to take a tour of the uh, north side of that levee along our uh, property and the uh, breach that occurred, uh, I guess, in January. And uh, I, I assume you still have my number. And anytime you're available, uh, I'm more than happy and, and available to uh, take you out there to show you the the breach and the and the damage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do we have any other public comment at this time? All right, then we will move on to the consent agenda. Um, and I believe that we can vote on these as a group. Is that right? That's correct. You should ask for public comment on the consent on any items on the consent agenda. Is there any public comment on the consent agenda items? There is no public comment. All right then. Um, is there a motion to approve the items on the consent agenda? And those are the approval of the minutes from the May 22nd meeting and the acknowledgement of certificate of posting of agenda. Um, Would you, would you like to, to move to approve the consent agenda items? Yes, we approve. So, so you are making a motion to approve? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, and I will second the motion. And all in favor? Aye. So are, um, I did, aye. aye. Okay. All right, all those opposed? All right, so uh, the consent agenda is approved. We will now move on to the regular agenda. And the first item is an update regarding the status of the FEMA application for the uh, public as emergency public assistance to repair the levee breaks. And we have Steve Loop from the staff. All right, good evening, trustees, uh, for item 2.1. Uh, provide the status for the request for emergency public assistance. So um, the Water District has been assigned a project manager by FEMA, which is another good step forward. Um, that person's name is Lee Marison, and we will be meeting this week um, with Lee I believe on Friday at 1 p.m. It's either going to be Thursday at 4 p.m. or Friday at 1 p.m., depending on some availability of folks in this room. But um, And at that meeting, we'll go through the list of requested um, items for reimbursement from FEMA. And uh, the, two, the way that FEMA and our team here in this room have decided to break up <coughs> the reimbursement requests. We're going to be, re be request, requesting reimbursement for the debris per the first set of storms because all the debris piles were essentially in place during the first set of storms. And that event is called 4683 in the eyes of the state and FEMA. And then for the levee breach, because it actually was made worse after the second set of storms, that will be requested for reimbursement and funding on the second set of storms, which is event 4699. So on Friday, we'll be discussing the debris removal request and start processing that. And then probably in a month or so, we'll be um, requesting the funding for the levy break. And on that note, regarding public comment from Mr. Botello, um, I have scheduled a a site visit with the Department of Water Resources levy repair team on July 6th. So somewhere around that time, I'll be reaching out to Mr. Botello to visit his site as well as the other, at least two other locations where we think there's a breach. So that's the status from FEMA. Thank you. 
Great, thank you. Um, so are there any questions for, um, for staff on this? So uh, that debris pile there by the bridge, so what is the status of that now? Because I, I know that, well, I guess that isn't, oh, I, that's the next, that's the next item. Sorry, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. So there, it doesn't appear that there are any questions for you about this item. Uh, should I take public comment on this item now or see if there's any public comment? Yes, each item um, you should ask if there's public comment. All right, is there any public comment on this item 2.1? And this has to do with the FEMA application to repair the levee breaks. There is one public comment via Zoom. Anthony, you've been unmuted. Oh, okay, thank you, Steve, uh, for that. And I'll, I'll be available. Uh, to whatever assistance I could provide. A uh, question I have is once you get the funding, uh, actually two questions, it, uh, as far as the quotes for the, to get the funding, you have to have some idea of the funds that are needed uh, for uh, debris removal, as well as the levy breaches. How, how did you arrive at those uh, uh, assessments for the, the cost of, the, of doing that work. And the second part of that question is, once you get the funding, how long will it take to engage the work and, and complete it? Thank you. Okay, and if I may address the public comment? Yes, All right. go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> so, um, we have taken a recent drone video and we can count, um, I've counted five pretty good sized piles. They're not as large as the, the debris pile that's drifted near um, the Lover's Lane Bridge. But we had a meeting um, with FEMA for this project about three weeks ago, I believe. And we gave them the dimensions of the debris piles and I actually walked um, and visually assessed a couple of the debris piles, the two larger ones. And so long story short, they, we all guessed it'd be about 100,000 per debris pile. And so um, we'll find out a timeline, hopefully on this Friday, of when the funding could be approved um, to answer the, the question on. And once we um, actually are fairly certain to receive some funds, then we can talk about how we can proceed because I don't know if they, you know, they, somehow, let's just say we need a half a million dollars. I, my guess is we're gonna have to um, receive some assurance from FEMA that they'll actually provide the funding and then I'll schedule it the minute that we receive that assurance. But again, I won't know that timeline until at least this Friday when we meet with um, with Lee. And then I think the, in my humble opinion, the, the, the difficult part is gonna be what, how do we dispose of five very large piles of damp debris, at least it's damp on the bottom from what I can see. So we threw that question out to FEMA and the state during our last meeting. And so we're gonna revisit that question of do we chip it? Do we compost it? How do we get it off site and um, and go from there? So, thank you. Is there any other public comment on this item, agenda item two point one? Uh, you do not need a card, but uh, you do need to approach the mic so that we can have your comment on the record. <laughs> the uh, meeting is being recorded and so people who are not on the microphone their voices while they may be loud are not picked up for the recording yeah I'm loud <laughs> my question was for Mr. Loop anyway is 
is it possible that the county could do this work and then get the reimbursement from the government or whoever, like FEMA or whoever pays you guys? Because that, you know, I, I'm watching the weather and uh, El Nino is here. We're feeling the effects in the eastern part of the country and uh, they tell us we're going to rain in September. So if that's the case, are we going to build an ark or are we going to have that mess cleaned up and then we'll ask them to reimburse us. We do it first if the county's got the money. No, De Niro? <clears throat> you can, you can are, tell me that, yeah. Are you finished with your comment? I'm finished, yes. Okay. Okay, we have another comment, and then and then you can address both of them. Hello, my okay. name is Lucinda Florek. I'm from San Benito County, um, Lubbers Lane Storm District area. Um, I think I asked this last time, the, not the previous month, but the month before, that I kind of like to have a little visibility of these five piles that you're talking about, and then uh, maybe provide a map of where these are located. So that way we can have a little bit more visibility of what we're looking at and where our funds are going. And then we can all, as an owners and property owners and people that live there can actually see when the, that, those projects have been completed too. Just for, just for um, visibility and accountability, I think for everybody, you know, where our funds are going. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment on this item? There are no further public comments. Okay. So may I address uh, public questions? Please. All right. So per the first question regarding funding, um, the county does have some emergency funds available. What we're doing right now, we're, we're trying to compensate the contractors that have been performing repair work throughout the county over the past few months and it's still actually ongoing a bit, believe it or not. And so we're allocating some funding towards that. And um, I will reach out to our CAO and our auditing folks and see if there's additional emergency funding that could be made available for that activity. Um, and I think it's, it's a worthwhile um, discussion so but I, I don't know the answer if, if the county is gonna be able to um, quote unquote you know front the money or loan the district the money and then regarding the piles yeah so I've been watching the the drone videos and um, what I'll do is after I, I finish now that I know kind of where the piles are from the videos and I've seen two they're pretty large actually but the other three ones I'll, I'll have to walk it and map and maybe I'll walk it before the 6th um, and uh, take Mr. Battello up on his offer sooner rather than later and try to get some of those the smaller ones mapped out in addition to the two large ones and then we can all see you know what we're talking about and um, that will I like visuals too so it's a good suggestion so thank you thank you all right, I will move on now to item 2.2, .2, uh, which is an update on debris removal. And uh, so Steve is back at the podium. And I think you know which pile I'm, I, I meant there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a real large one um, by the, the Lover's Lane Bridge just upstream. And it's gradually flooding closer and closer to the bridge. And then there's also a real large pile at the main levee breach, which is actually near San Felipe, um, on the, that property corner, um, right near that bridge, it's a few hundred feet down, and it, it's pretty apparent that's what caused a blockage, and then that ended up with resulting in the breach onto, you know, the fields, and then going down towards Lovers Lane. So those are the two large ones. From what I can tell from the video, there's there are three smaller ones at least, and in addition to that, per a good suggestion from um, some of the public in the audience here, I reached out to California Conservation Corps um, 
Janet. I want to try to pronounce her last name. It's tricky. It starts with a W. But um, we've been placed on their July queue to reserve a team. It sounds like there's about 40-ish folks that might be able to help come and hopefully in July, which is coming just around the corner, we'll have some good news from FEMA, the state, about funding um, because I, I think the breach, it, it, they'll be able to help out with that if not the debris pile. I think the debris piles might be more efficiently addressed with contractors, but we'll see. Well, I'll talk to Janet and see what she's been working on. I guess her teams have been working on these type of activities and some firefighting activities. So long story short, we're in the queue. It sounds like towards the end of July that she's reserved a team of um, California Conservation Corps. And I think she said they bill about forty-five or $50,000 a week, which is actually pretty reasonable. So, um, so that is the status on the debris removal. So. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes, I have a question. You said it's a team, probably the boys, the 45 guys. Those guys, if they work in a week, how much debris they can clean in one week? And how long they take to clean the whole area? Very good question. Um, I think between now and maybe mid-July, because it sounds like they won't be ready until the end of July, I'll, I'll reach out to Janet again and kind of assess what they've done in the past and how she thinks they can most efficiently help us. Um, I, I mean, these, these piles are pretty large, uh, so they might, believe it or not, when I meet with the Department of Water Resources on July 6th, they might actually have some ideas about how we can use the Conservation Corps, in the, at least on the smaller breaches, because there's breaches on the north side, probably in two locations, on one near the Lover's Lane Bridge and one near the San Felipe Bridge, there's smaller breaches. So the Corps might help with that. And if, if Janice says the Corps has been helping with large debris pile removal activities, um, that's great. So I think I just need to assess what they're um, experienced with and, and ask them. Otherwise, we'll just have a contractor um, come out, like a large contractor with a big excavator. And again, the trick is, you know, what do we do with the debris? I think we'll be able to get the majority of it out of the creek, but we just have to um, find a way to either dispose of it on site or take it to our landfill. And so, I don't know if that, does that answer your question? Yeah, he's fine. Okay, all right, thanks. Is there any public comment on this agenda item? There is no public comment. All right. Oh, it's it. Okay, please come on up. <laughs> I just want to. Um, hello, my name is Lucinda Florek. Again, this is for question to uh, Mr. Loops here. Uh, on the follow up on that, since it's in end of July, are we going to be? You, you, it looks like you said you're going to be talking to to what was her name again? Janet. To Janet, right? So um, do we already have like a, a plan to have them work and for how long? Or is it just kind of like we're going to evaluate at the end of July? You know, um, so that would be my like my follow up question on that, because, you know, we don't want to. It seems like it's been a couple months since we were promised that that debris on the bridge was going to be cleared in because I missed last, I wasn't here last month, but you know, so it's been a couple months, and so it's still there. And so it just seems like it would be kind of late if we wait until July 30th to find out we're not going to use them. You know, so a follow up question would be like, I mean, maybe there should be a kind of a conversation with Janet to see if, if they can allocate them if you agree that they're going to be able to do the job successfully or if we need somebody to go in and contract it. So um, I would like to see it done by, say, we're gonna do it on the end of July instead of saying we're gonna wait until July to find an answer, you know? So that's my follow-up to you. Thank you. So can I address the question? Please. Great. So, um, 
if I gave the impression that the debris was going to be cleaned up a couple months ago, then I think I gave the wrong impression because first we need to be allocated some funding and then we can allocate the resources to clean it up. However, as mentioned previously, I'll reach out to um, my supervisors, I'll say, and see if we can allocate some county funding sooner rather than later. Because right now, there is no funding to do the cleanup. That's the problem, whether it's county, non-county, water district. Um, so, um, so that's number one. Number two, yeah, so Janet, we spoke briefly. She emailed back. And so we have a crew in the queue for the last few weeks of July. And so I, I, believe me, she and I both will be talking before then to see what that means. And again, I want to assess, are they familiar with debris removals? Or she had mentioned, you know, they, they're great at doing sandbags and, and moving, you know, small earth, doing small earthwork activities. So that's what we talked about on the phone a couple weeks ago, or actually it was about three weeks ago when she first said she'll reserve a crew for us for a few weeks at the end of the month. So we'll definitely have those conversations. Hopefully after Friday, I'll, we'll have a little better impression of when we can ex expect some funding um, from FEMA or the state or some kind of at least preliminary approval. They, they have a process where they'll, you know, preliminarily approve an activity and they won't actually give you the funding but what we do is we ask to be you know allocated funding for the activity and then again the county would have to or the water district would have to come up with the funding to pay a contract or even pay the core and then FEMA would reimburse us and if we were allocated ahead of time that funding I think the county would be a lot more amenable to find some money in the county coffers to help the activity happen as you said right so um so that's pretty much the status of where we're at on the debris removal. So. Thank you. Is there any other public comment on this agenda item? There are no uh, other public comments. All right, then we will move on to 2.3. And this is an update on the uh, California Special Districts Association membership. And um, I don't know, Joel, do you have uh, a, pres a report on this or I can just talk about what I found out? Yes, if you would, please. I, I don't have a report. Okay. I thought you were handling yeah, no, it. No, no, I, I, I can't. There's, there's not a great deal to report, but um, I'm happy to report. Well, first of all, let's, let's review for a minute what the Special District Association, California Special District Association it is a, an association of special districts, right? Um, like water districts. So the, our, our Pacheco Stormwater District is what is called a special district. Um, and there are associations for pretty much everything, including uh, special districts. So we discussed, we've been discussing joining uh, the, this association. And one of the benefits of membership is that we would have access to insurance that they sell for, for districts such as ours, liability insurance, for instance. So we, I, I submitted an application, and because uh, they had, they had um, a special sort of um, deal, I guess you could say, which is... Um, pay what you can, I think, is what they're calling it. And because we're so small and we don't have really any revenue to speak of, the, they basically they allowed us to join with no membership fee, at least for this year. And then moving forward, I believe the membership fee is based on our revenue. And again, since we don't have any revenue really, then it, it won't be very much even moving forward. But um, we are now members of the California Special District Association, and that allows us to access their website, and they have various different resources for us. Uh, I spoke with one of their representatives a couple of weeks ago about this, 
And uh, in addition to the insurance, I told him that I would be interested in finding out if there are any other similar uh, districts similar to ours, small water districts, right, that we might be able to connect with to see how they do things. And he said he would look, he would research that. I haven't heard back from him about that. Um, so, so the uh, our district now is a member. I also did ask for a quote on insurance, and uh, they can't give me a formal quote until we submit an application and it goes through underwriting. So I have not yet submitted the application, but they did tell me that their least expensive policy is about three thousand dollars a year, three thousand to thirty-five hundred. Now, one thing that uh, they did mention is that they only sell uh, a package of insurance that includes not only liability and errors and omissions that would protect the uh, the, the trustees, but also workers' comp and automobile liability, um, which we don't really need at this point because we don't own any autos um, and we don't have any employees. So she did, the representative there, did suggest to me that we might consider looking for insurance elsewhere. She said there are some small districts that are members of the CSDA that do not get insurance from them, that they just go to a local broker to see if they can get just the liability and the errors and omissions and that it might be a little bit cheaper. So I thought before I submit the application, I thought it would be good to have a conversation about this to see if, if, that, if we would prefer to do that uh, as it might be a little bit less expensive. I mean, we could at least, I guess, get a quote. So um, do you have any comments about that, or Trustee Alfaro? Do you have any suggestions? OK, the, it's like uh, insurance for Ace family or for the whole area? Well, the insurance is just for us as trustees okay. of the district. So it, it's, not insur it's not flood insurance or anything like that for the homeowners. The insurance would cover us as trustees as we're doing the job of the Pacheco Stormwater District. So if we incurred any liability based on, you know, if we, if we had, I don't know, well, I mean, we're going to be hiring contractors to do the, the repairs, and they would have their own insurance. But if there were any decisions that we made that someone objected to and then was damaged by, for instance, then this insurance would protect us as a group based on the decisions that we make. Now, um, I'll, I'll see if Joel can um, verify my explanation and perhaps offer... Um, more input on that? No, your explanation, I think, uh, generally speaking, is appropriate. I don't know <coughs> what general <coughs> insurance brokers might handle anything al along those lines, <coughs> and I don't have any recommendations of who you might contact about that. Well, we could, I mean, we could, we could contact a local broker to see who sells that kind of insurance. Um, it may be as a government entity or quasi-government entity, I guess. We may be in a special category that, that I don't know if it would be easy to buy just insurance on the general market. I, I have no idea. Um, do you have any recommendation about whether it would be preferable for the district to purchase the entire package? Um, well, I, it's really, uh, you know, if you have insurance that you're not, you don't need or don't use, um, it, it really um, uh, depends on, you know, w what the alternatives are. <laughs> if it's still less expensive, even if you're getting coverage for things you don't need, then that's, uh, you know, better to have more than 
not enough or more expensive, but that's just common sense uh, advice in that regard. Um, generally speaking, um, public entities um, like counties and cities have self-insurance pools uh, that they participate in. Um, the Risk Management Authority for the Special Districts is an example of that kind of um, uh, pooled liability. So I suspect that that may be the most appropriate uh, vehicle for this. Thank you. Is there any comment, public comment, on this agenda item? There is no public comment. All right. Well, then I guess we just need to decide, um, and it's, it's just you and me, <laughs> Trustee Alfaro. So uh, the, the question is, should I submit an application for this insurance through the California Special District Association? Or should I see if we can get a quote that for in insurance, since, since the California Special District Association insurance would include uh, coverage that we don't need, should we investigate whether we can buy a separate policy from a local broker? Probably we have to investigate it from okay. a local broker. All right, okay. So then do we... Okay, I can I can do that. Um, all right, and I think we've already voted on getting a quote from the risk, the special district risk management authority, right? So, do I need any other authorization to get quotes from local brokers? Other than a consensus of those present. Uh, because you're not actually making a commitment, you're just getting information. Okay, well I think there's a consensus. So I will go ahead and do both. I will submit an application to the, um, the Special District Risk Management Authority, and then I will also make a few phone calls and see what's, what's, what else is out there. All right, then I think we can move on. The next item is 2.4, and this involves uh, reviewing and approving the professional services agreement between the Pacheco Stormwater District and the County of San Benito. And uh, so, Joel, do you have uh, a presentation on this item? Uh, well, I provided, as part of the agenda package, a, a draft of this. Um, I had an initial draft and, and then uh, Trustee uh, Schroeder um, had some comments on it, so it, I revised the, dr the draft and that's the version that, uh, that I've most recently sent that was attached to the agenda item. Uh, the purpose of, of this agreement uh, is to actually um, get credit for uh, the value of the work that's being provided by county staff to p possibly use as the as part of the matching fund requirement for local funding. Um, the, the county has so far authorized staff to provide th uh, the support for the district to pursue the FEMA application and do all the work that uh, Steve and Madison and Ariel and Victor and myself are doing. Uh, it's just a question of accounting for that um, and so that there's a, a dollar figure that the, the county can then say, uh, yeah, we agree that that's, uh, we're gonna provide that to the district as part of the local match requirement. Um, and so it's really, um, uh, providing the, an understanding that supports that in writing and then um, uh, 
getting to the point where where that uh, local match is determined and then the board of supervisors would would have to make a decision to um, that they're going to provide that to to the district okay so um so right so basically to summarize uh the county has been providing a number of services to the district and uh they've been and the county's been doing so without a formal agreement up until this point correct and so this agreement that you drafted would formalize that uh arrangement and it would uh, go into effect when signed i guess presumably uh end of june or or july and uh and last for one year um and part of the rationale for for putting this together is that if we have a formal agreement we can use the the value of the services provided by the county to show the federal government that the district is indeed incurring part of the cost itself right because the the fema requires us to to shoulder let's say six percent right i think it was six percent and so the idea is that that if we can show them that we've incurred these costs um that that we could use that to say see we've we've incurred our six percent right am i am i summarizing this correctly uh, just to clarify that a bit um that essentially have an agreement that that we're going to account for this at the uh, fully burdened rate of all the staff that are doing the work and so that uh, amounts to uh, whatever sum of money it is you know people keep their uh, time cards and will put down their time for working on uh, stormwater district work um, th what the federal and state governments require is that the local match not come from federal funding so it can come from the county um, committing to pay staff out of general fund revenues and that's not federal funds and use that as part of the local match. Okay, thank you for that clarification. So um, it's, not, it's not coming out of, not necessarily coming out of funds for the district since the district really doesn't have any right. significant amount of funds so right now um but the the agreement does have a payment schedule and talks about the terms of payment being net 30 days from the invoice except from the invoice date except to the extent that the county credits amounts due to its contribution of up to one half of the um, pacheco stormwater district costs and then there's a reference to the stormwater district. So, um, I guess what I'm what I'm saying is, so the county, obviously, the county has been providing these services, right, and without an agreement, and without any expectation that the the district would pay the county back. Um, they once we sign this agreement i mean there's there's nothing in the you, you because of my concern you did add a lot of language about the um making a credit for the our local cost share uh although there's nothing in here that that says definitively the county will not expect the district to actually pay money do you know right. what i'm saying and, yes i do and um, that's not something i can address right. in the draft okay. agreement and something that the trustees need to address with the supervisors and um there is an a, a draft of the agreement has also been put on tomorrow's agenda not for action by the board but as information about um, they're authorizing 
uh, me to continue work yes. on behalf of the district uh, as a retired annuitant. Uh, I don't, you know, know what uh, uh, what decision they'll make, but uh, this this uh, agreement for professional services is not personal to me. Right. Uh, they could the county could provide legal services through another attorney in our office or through outside counsel. I, you know. That's, that'll be up to them. Um, but And the, the professional services agreement that you're looking at uh, t tonight is, is really just the framework for, for the larger issue of the county having to provide. But whether, whether or not the county is prepared to make a commitment today uh, or when this agreement is signed that they're going to... Um, absorb the full cost of this and use it as a uh, provided to the district as a contribution towards uh, uh, the local match requirement um, uh, is again I think something will that'll have to be on the agenda of a future Board of Supervisors meeting and if you were to if the district were to approve it, it could be subject to such an agreement. Um, and then uh, you, as on behalf of the district, you wouldn't sign it un unless you got that agreement from the, from the county. So it's hmm. something that you could authorize subject to that, that additional term and, um, uh, and then pursue that in a dialogue with the supervisors. Okay, so um, so if we did that, if if uh, would that have to be in writing as part of the agreement, or would that be just in our resolution, adopt or approving this? We would say uh, it that could it, be in the form of your motion yes. to. to approve it subject to uh, an agreement f from the county n not to uh, uh, expect payment uh, okay that would I would be more comfortable with that I mean we don't we'll, we don't have much money anyway I mean we have a little bit of money in an account somewhere right but um, I, I still have a problem with uh, signing this knowing that you know we don't we don't have the money to pay for these services um, and I assume that if we don't sign this then then we won't be able to pursue using this as our share of cost with FEMA they they would probably require a formal agreement like this um, yeah and I'm not certain that this this formal agreement will be sufficient <laughs> but okay. it, but it's it's uh, attempt to, an attempt to document the the uh, the expenses that are being accrued uh, for that purpose so okay thank you um, all right so trustee Alfaro did you uh, do you have any comments or questions about this Uh, not right now. We have to think in about this. Okay. Um, okay. I, I would also point out that this is a district obligation. It is not personal to any of the trustees. So. Um, right. Of course. Yes. So this we would not be personally liable for the, this money. Uh, still, we could potentially be obligating the district, although we could uh, one suggestion that joel had is that we could say okay we'll sign this but only if the county agrees that they're not going to pursue payment directly from the district well we have to sign we have to sign well, I think uh, I think we have to seriously consider signing it 
because I think it will it will definitely help us with FEMA is does it need to be does it need to be approved this evening since we don't we I mean I know we have a quorum but uh, trustee Ascona is not here will this delay things with FEMA if we if we put this off for another month uh, it's it's really to set up a future uh, situation so there is time to to uh, consider this further at a future meeting it's just um, uh, be mindful of the fact that the board is only scheduled one meeting for uh, the board of supervisors is only s scheduled one meeting for July uh, I I suspect that we're several months away uh, from uh, having the the local match issue uh, come to fruition as far as FEMA is concerned so it's it's a, we're anticipating that that's going to be necessary at some point but it's not an immediate problem okay um, Steve do you have any input on that in terms of your dealings with FEMA so um, as Joel mentioned yeah we're just trying to build up credit for the water district and you know it's it's a relatively small amount of money even you know whether it's county projects or the water district staff time it's not a huge amount of money so by if you want to pause say for a month till the board meets again at the end of July it's not really gonna you know you're not going to be losing a, a huge sum of money honestly it's just it's just our staff time and you know we're spending a few hours a week and um so if you if you want to pause and think about it it's it's not going to have a big effect on anything financially if that's the question so yeah okay thank you <clears throat> all right um at this time we'll take public comment on this agenda item is there any public comment there are no public comment. Okay, so um, Trustee Alfaro, what would what would you like to do? <laughs> would you like to wait? Would you like to move forward? Let's go move forward. Let's move forward. Okay. Would you like to? Um, well, I guess I can make the motion then, maybe. Um, so I move that we approve this professional services agreement between the Pacheco Stormwater District and the county, um, but only subject to the county agreeing to, how would I put this, to take on the cost of the actual services or not require direct payment from the district? Okay, so that is the motion. Um, is it seconded? Do you second that motion? Yes, we can second that. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so it, uh, it passes with that caveat. So I guess I can go ahead and sign it this evening and uh, I, would, I, would I would recommend that you com communicate the substance of the motion to the board of supervisors saying so you, you reviewed the agreement ah okay and prior that, to signing it right and okay wait for their response okay I will do that I will I will communicate that uh, in the form of an email I guess. Well, I can talk to you about that after. Right. Okay, then let's move on. The next item is an update on the Pacheco Stormwater District Advisory Board. And since our last meeting, I received one application for our advisory board from Anthony Batello. So um, I... 
I can uh, give that to whoever it is that I need to give that to. But um, is there anything that what what would be the next step then? Uh, I I did I have not received any other applications. But do we vote then on um, on approving this Anthony Vitello as a member of our our advisory board or? Uh, yes, you don't. Uh, I don't know whether you determine how many. Uh, members the advisory committee might have, but you can ap appoint them as they become available. I don't think we ever came up with a number. Um, I did the last time we talked about maybe three members. Okay, yes. So um, Trustee Alfaro yeah. said that we were talking about possibly three. So that sounds like a good number since there are three of us. Um, but since we've only we only have one application at this point, uh, I've been I've been in contact with Grant Bryan's, uh, but he has not submitted an application. So I'll have to follow up with him. Uh, so I guess public comment. Yes, public comment. On there are no public. Oh well, wait. There might be. <laughs> Hold on. There is one public comment. Okay, and Judy, if you could please state your name for the record. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm just a resident on Lover's Lane. My name is Judy Barbosa. And I had a question that uh, out there where we live, we haven't heard that the applications were available. I mean, no one has talked about it. And I talked to my neighbors once in a while, but no one has said a word. They're not aware of this. And they should, give, should be given the time because I'm actually wondering how you're gonna get a hold of people to find out what's actually going on out there because they're still a little bit peeved <laughs> at things going so slow out there. I don't know why they're coming to me because they should be going to you guys. But anyway, uh, I'll bring this up on the next one about funds. But that my question was now is are you gonna open that up so everybody can find out that these applications are available in case they want to do that? And was there a boundary line for those to be eligible to do this? Uh, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm, thank um, you. There, no, there was no, uh, so this is for the advisory board. This is separate from the actual board itself. So this is just an, a group of advisors. And those people need not be residents or of the district. They need not own property. Although they might, uh, that that's not a requirement. Uh, and mainly we were trying to solicit uh, applications from people who might have some expertise or, or knowledge of the history of the levies that could aid us in making our decisions. Again, a resident on Lover's Lane with my name, Judy. Uh, a question is, if we open it up to anyone th that's, who wants to do this and may have the expertise, what is to, pre to prevent from stalling or having this big mix-up every time we have a meeting? Because somebody who lives outside of the area is not really knowing what's going on. And uh, I don't know if the county is running on a 100-year plan or a 150-year-old plan. And this needs to be told to us, who us are those who live out there, because that has a great effect on everybody out there. So if you're not aware of the 100-year plan, and if you are, you're the person that needs to live there and know what's happening, because you're going to be the person who, who knows and you have the best advice. OK, okay thank that, you. That's my view of someone who firsthand knowledge seems to work thank you okay thank you uh, well and, and I and I do appreciate your point about people not knowing what's going on and we are we are working on that actually as you mentioned that is the next agenda item actually about the web page is there further public comment on on um, our current agenda item the advisory board there is no further comments all right, well, um, 
I mean, we there's we had thought maybe we'd have three, and uh, we only have one application. So there's there's still space <laughs> if other people want to submit applications. Uh, I think that we can go ahead, since we do have this one application, we, we could go ahead and consider this one application. Am I right about that? Correct. Okay. All right, then. So, Trustee Alfaro, we have one application. I can, I can show it to you, actually, although it's very brief. <laughs> there's there's not, not much to it. And actually, Mr. Botello is, is present at the meeting via Zoom, so if you have any questions for him, um, I'm assuming he's still, is he still on the, oh, did he? Okay. Yeah, like uh, Ms. Judy, she said uh, we need people, they live in the area, you know, so they can have more knowledge about what's happening in the area. Okay. Um, well, so, and maybe, okay, maybe we can have Mr. Botello next meeting talk about a little bit about his background, although I think he did that already. At, he is a past board of, he, he's been on, he was a past supervisor from the Board of Supervisors, and he owns property in the district. He doesn't live there, but he does farm there. Oh, I, I think I remember him. He's uh, the big dog guy with the beard. No, that's Grant Bryan's. And uh, I've, I've been talking to him also about joining, but he has not submitted an application. So, but I, I will continue to speak to him. Okay. So, um, Yes, Anthony Botello um, was a member of the Board of Supervisors for at least three terms and perhaps four, so 12 or 16 years. So uh, um, he's a, one of the partners in uh, B and P fruit that owns a parcel that is uh, <coughs> um, west of San Felipe, um, but it spans it cross crosses over into Santa Clara County as well. Uh, so it, it's a uh, a large parcel on the north side of the creek, and they did have uh, uh, breaches in the past uh, of the levee along that area. It is subject to uh, an easement uh, from former property owners granted to the district uh, to uh, construct and maintain uh, levies. So. so he has all the knowledge that we need? He has. Well, he has some, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, you know, I'm new in the area, so I don't know so many of the people. Is what I, sometimes I say, you know, we need the people, they have experience and they live in that area for a long time. I just live in Lower Lane for two years. So, so see, they have the knowledge, this is the people that we need it. Yeah, it would be. I have a uh, comment. Oh, yes, please. Uh, so, go yeah, ahead. Lucinda again, Lucinda Floric, uh, Lover's Lane. Um, I just wanted to um, just comment on this, and I think Alfaro, Mr. Alfaro already kind of seems like he agrees to possibly Mr. Patello to, to be part of the advisory. But I don't, to respond to you, I don't think it's important that they live in the area. But if somebody who has experience in, in what we're trying to do. And so that's the major point of the advisory committee, is to get somebody in who is, can't help us to establish or make a really strong uh, storm district. So even going outside, maybe to the person that you're talking about that already has a storm district, and uh, inviting them to be your advisors, our advisors. I don't have expertise. I just have a little bit kind of like general knowledge and some, but no expertise. So I can't seem to be, I want to apply, but I do want to push, you know, you guys to go maybe in that way because I think um, these advisors like Mr. Patel and other people like Grant Bryans, somebody who has great knowledge in how to control the water districts, how to control flood areas, how to do that type of thing, or somebody even in the other Pacheco Storm District in their group maybe want to come in, step in and advise us 
in how to do this district. And that would be my recommendation. We, they don't need to be living here because as you could probably see, we don't have very many people here, right? And people that, that are capable or feel capable that they can participate in an effective manner. So if we can invite those people and encourage them to be part or apply as your advisors, our advisors, then I think that would be very good to do. Thank you. Yeah. Is there any other public comment on this agenda item? There are no further public comments. All right, well then I would like to move that we approve Anthony Botello as the first member of the Pacheco Stormwater District Advisory Board. Is there a second on that motion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right then. So Anthony Botello is now a member of our advisory board and um, these applications, do I need to give them to anyone or? Okay, I have an electronic version. I also have a, a hard copy that's n not as easy to read, but how would you? Okay, then, then I will do that to, Vic to Victor or? Yes. 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 Okay, yes. great, I will do that, thank you. Okay, then let's move on to um, 2.6, update on Pacheco Stormwater District webpage. So um, is there any staff report on this agenda item? Good afternoon, trustees. Uh, my name is Victor. Um, so the update, uh, so the s website can be um, accessed uh, by clicking on, it's accessed through our county website by hovering your mouse over the department section. And it's gonna, uh, the departments are gonna appear and you're gonna see there the Pacheco Stormwater District. Uh, once you click on there, from the notes that I gathered, um, you the district wanted a mission statement, uh, and the mission statement reads as follows. So the mission of the statement of the Pacheco uh, Stormwater District is to address the recent flooding caused by the atmospheric river storm and prevent future floods in the area. The district aims to implement changes and repair the levee to ensure the safety of the residents affected by the flooding on Lover's Lane. So the mission statement serves as a concise and clear statement of the purpose and goals of the uh, district. It communicates the overall mission and direction of the district to stakeholders and the general public. The main purpose of a mission statement is to provide a guidance framework for the decision-making strate st strategic planning and resource allocation within the district. Uh, I also heard that the district uh, wanted a history uh, statement, so uh, the history portion reads as follows. The Pacheco Stormwater District was formed in 1931 under the enabling legislation of Water Code Section 3400 to 3801. It operates as an independent district and is responsible for providing water supply for natural groundwater recharge through reservoir storage and release the district reservoirs are specifically. I'm sorry, I'm gonna interrupt here a bit. Uh, uh, we're gonna need to 
edit this uh, draft because right now it's referring to the Pacheco Passwater District rather than the Pacheco Stormwater District. But those are changes that w that we can make, and um, this it does indicate the what areas of content there will be, but we'll have to make some corrections along the way. Okay. So that's the map of the district here? Yeah, that, but that's a map of the Pacheco Pass Water District, not the Pacheco Storm Water District. They're two separate entities. So we'll get it, we'll get yeah. it revised and get the right map up there and the right history and so on. Okay. okay. Well, I, I appreciate your work on this. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and um, Oh, oh, wow, there we are. Look there at that. is, yeah, your name okay. on there. And I'm open to our new recommendations. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. I mean, I, we were supposed to uh, supply content, and we, we, I didn't do that. So I, I appreciate your um, moving forward on this. Um, Trustee Alfaro, do you have any comments or questions about this no no comments okay uh, so now we'll take public comment on this there are no public comments no public comments really nobody wants to talk about this yeah okay well I, I have a comment <laughs> uh, it actually probably more like a plea um, so I wanted to, I, I would love to work on this web page, but uh, instead I've been, you know, dealing with insurance and special district and service agreements and uh, the like. And so I haven't had time to, to do this, which frankly I think would be more fun actually than, than the other stuff. But um, so I'm wondering whether, uh, I mean, we have an advisory board now, we're forming an advisory board. Um, would would we would it be appropriate to ask for volunteers to help uh, with publicity, publicizing the the um, the board and our our work and helping in our outreach? Absolutely, uh, they wouldn't have to be advisory board members. They could just be uh, members of the community who wanted to volunteer to help. Uh, and, Yeah, well, actually, what I had in mind was maybe one or two people who would be willing to, to, um, you know, also be sort of our liaisons on in the neighborhood too, and uh, and come up with some ideas for. Yeah, no, I yeah, I know. Yeah, I'll I'll talk to her. I'll I'll talk to her about it and see whether. Judy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, maybe. Um. Do, so. Victor. Victor. Okay, so it's, I mean, we can have conversations about this in the neighborhood, right? That's not part of the, as long as we're not making any decisions, that's not a violation of the Brown Act or anything, right? I mean, I can walk over to the, the Florex and talk to Lucinda about Absolutely, the web, the it's only, page. the only restriction is on conversations between trust, members of ah, the trustees. Ah, got it, okay. Not, uh, uh, not with any other 
uh, interested. Okay, person. so Paula and I have to be careful, and and Armando, we, we can't. We have to be careful about the kinds of conversations we have, and right. All, all, right. Essentially, the district business needs to be done at agendized, open public district meetings. So okay, all right. Um. Okay, was there, is there any other public comment on this agenda item? There are no further public comments. Okay, then I think we can move on to 2.7, which is a discussion of potential revenue sources for the district. Right, and I was in the process of preparing a, a memo uh, to the board about how the stormwater district act calls for uh, steps that the district would have to take to um, obtain revenue um, it is constrained by the fact that this was passed in 1909 and we since have proposition 13 that has to do with uh, limits property tax assessment so what the act provides for is not ex directly available except there is a there are provisions regarding bonded indebtedness that the district could exercise it would require putting a bond measure on the ballot and having an election by um, the voters within the the uh, boundaries of the district and um, it would require a two-thirds vote approval um, it's, uh, it is possible that that would be another source of revenue for a local fund match when you got to that point um, that you could go to the 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 voters in the district and say you know we we have 94 percent of all of the funding and and uh, and another three percent from the county or five percent from the county and we just need to cover another one percent of what the total cost is and so uh, and perhaps that uh, you could incur bonded indebtedness to pay so, um, did you have a, um, a, a couple of issues that you want to add to that Steve I do and I, I can do it from here thank you Joel so um, as was previously mentioned the the optimal funding source, if FEMA grants it, would be that FEMA and state, FEMA and the state would partner, and the water district, um, as was previously mentioned, would only be responsible for approximately six percent of the costs to, you know, perform work. Um, the Army Corps has a program where they could potentially help out. Their local matches between 25 and 30 percent as opposed to 60 percent um, so we'll wait and see how FEMA and the state um, decides whether or not they're going to provide reimbursement but one thing I just wanted to mention just a small item the county because the county has what they call a hazardous mitigation plan for the county we've applied for a grant for the area to have a hydraulic study perform because really you know if we clean the, the debris piles that would be great if we clean up the breaches and you know clean up the creek in that area that would be great as well but over the past decades there's just a lot of sediment and vegetation that's built up into the creek and so it, we need a broader plan and so the county has applied for a grant to do a study of the area and the watershed all the water that goes into the area to determine you know how deep does the creek really need to be talking to a few property owners out there they said it used to be you know 8 10 12 feet deeper than it is today wow. and so um, and when you go out there I can you know I don't think they're exaggerating so that's you know a big um, factor in the flooding that's occurred over the years and so long story short we're hoping I, I don't know you know the the odds if we're gonna get this hydraulic study grant but we we're trying to come up with the 
a broader game plan to to look at you know how we can address all the water that is coming from you know upstream and so i just want to mention that for this item thank you i appreciate that do you know when you'll find out about the the application uh, madison might madison from oes she's here she actually applied for the grant so thanks um madison if you could i don't know the timing so Hello everyone, I'm Madison Mitchell from San Benito County OES, which is the Office of Emergency Services. I've been working closely with Steve uh, to support the district with their process with FEMA and also looking at potential funding opportunities to support. One of those is a grant, it's called the 404 Mitigation Grant and it's through Cal OES. Um, so it's specifically for projects to mitigate disasters. So ideally, this is a great project uh, the issue is it's very competitive right now, as you can imagine. Every county in the state applied for some type of assistance from the recent storms this year, so it's going to be very competitive. So like Steve said, it, we can't say whether or not we'll, we'll get it. That being said, we've only done the first initial stage of the application. So that first stage is called our notice of interest, where we notify the state that we're interested in applying, where we give them a scope of work for the project, so the study that Steve mentioned, and then the state determines if it's eligible and then determines if we can move forward with our actual application. So that project has been determined eligible. Our actual application, which will include a number of things, such as a threat assessment, um, additional studies and scopes, it's a very extensive application, that will be due in August. So likely find out by the end of the year, maybe late fall. Okay, great, thank you so much, Madison. You're welcome. Any more questions? Did you have any questions? I will also state it's not relevant to this application specifically, but because the district is identified as its own legal entity in the eyes of the state and the federal government, the district is eligible to apply for their own 404 hazard mitigation programs, or projects rather. The only issue with that is like Steve mentioned, one of the state requirements for application eligibility is an active and adopted hazard mitigation plan which is approved by the state. Unfortunately, you guys do not have an active hazard mitigation plan. I believe you are able to, when the county updates our plan, you're able to support that process and potentially be covered under a countywide plan, but our plan was just updated earlier this year. We're not looking at another update for another four years at this point. Uh, so my recommendation is if you're interested in pursuing additional hazard mitigation funds in the future would be to look at applying for that hazard mitigation uh, funding opportunity specifically to create your plan. The only project that the district is eligible for, for right now with these hazard mitigation funds is a plan, a uh, hazard mitigation plan. So you can submit an, a project only for a hazard mitigation plan, but again that cost share is kind of hefty. It's a 25% cost share. Um, your typical hazard mitigation plan, depending on what contractor you use or how you create it, will run you about 100, uh, probably 80,000 to 130,000 dollars, just to put that information out there. Maybe a little even more, a little more even, um, since typically the county looks at about 100,000 dollars per plan update, um, and that's not creating a plan from scratch. That's a plan update, so potentially even more just to give you some background details on that. But if you did choose to do that and you are awarded funds for a plan, you could create a hazard mitigation plan with the support of a consultant um, and then at that point be eligible for additional hazard mitigation projects in the near future should they become available. Okay, thank you. Um, I would report that there are other potential sources, uh, like through the Natural Resources Conservation Service, uh, which has, uh, I think, provided the original funding for the, for the, um, the levies. For the levies, uh, and then uh, at several points in the past, uh, either actually provided additional funding or offered additional funding. They were involved in a proposal for the repair of the 2017 but the uh, the dis, um, 2017 flooding event and the levee breach then 
but the district was inactive at the time, and so the county uh, and the the funding sources now and at that time also were looking for an operations and maintenance uh, plan, and the counties didn't have the rights uh, to to mm -hmm. provide that. That's why we have revived the district because it does hold easements uh, to um, construct and maintain the flood control facilities there. Um, so um, it, it is possible that's another source. And the other, um, there are other opportunities, I think, for um, looking at um, partnering with other um, uh, flood control and water agencies in the in the district, specifically uh, Pacheco Pass, yeah. the San Benito Water District, and Valley Water or Santa Clara Valley Water District. Yeah, like Joel said, there's a number of grant opportunities available, um, and a lot of them don't have the same requirements that your state grants are going to have or your federal grants will have. So that's always another avenue you guys can look into if you're interested. Okay, thank you. Um, I have one, just one other question. So do we yet have any more information about the, the, the origin of the money that we do have uh, in that account? I know you were going uh, to no. talk to it. Yeah, okay. Uh, we, um, I th the auditor identified the, the funds, but uh, the source and whether or not they're, it's an ongoing source is, um, is not uh, known currently. Uh, some may have been uh, originated from the Santa Clara County portion of the district, and uh, we're still looking into that. Um, it may okay. have been funds that have been in the account for a long time that have simply accrued um, interest, and um, there's not a current revenue stream other than um, uh, investment income. Okay, thank you. Is there um, any public comment on this issue? There is no public comment. All right, then let's move on to 2.8, presentation on San Benito County Conservation Plan and discussion of specific activities that the district proposes to be done within the Pacheco Creek. Okay. Hi. Hi. Good evening. My name is Ariel Goodspeed. I'm the principal planner with the County of San Benito. And um, I actually want to discuss a separate effort that's actually going on with the county and how it can relate back to this district um, uh, and those involved. So I'm going to kind of start. There's a lot of information. And so I apologize. You might have a lot of questions. But let me try to hopefully break it down in a way that makes sense. So what is the San Benito County Conservation Plan, you know, the purpose and goals. Um, uh, essentially, it's a joint uh, habitat conservation plan and natural community conservation plan. Um, uh, it's to protect and preserve its valuable natural resources, including sensitive species and the habitats that support them, um, We, while also supporting the county's agricultural economy and future growth. Um, so what is what does this plan do that we're putting together it basically develops and implements a regional approach to habitat conservation uh, it's a collaborative partnerships between landowners tribes conservation organizations and uh, many more uh, it's a programmatic process for mitigation of um, impacts uh, and it authorizes the use of incidental take permits for development and other projects that potentially affect sensitive uh, species and their habitats. And I'll get a little bit more in, into that um, in the presentation on how that's applicable uh, to this district. Um, it provides local control to the county to implement a streamlined endangered species permitting process for activities to be described uh, within the plan. Um, so I kind of really try to make this clear what the plan does and what it doesn't because there's a lot of misconception that goes on. Um, basically, it preserves a large portion of the county's natural habitat and uh, agricultural land. 
It protects listed species and their habitats with large interconnected reserve system, ensures compliance with federal and state endangered species acts. Um, it reduces the regulatory timelines and costs. It provides standardized mitigation conservation for the proposed projects. What it does not do, it does not approve or deny any project. It does not replace or change the county's permitting or planning process. Um, it does not add or reduce development permitting requirements. It does not weaken existing protection for listed species. Um, it does not eliminate the need for Federal and State Endangered Species Act permits. It just provides uh, local control to issue those permits. Um, this is just kind of a brief overview of kind of the whole process. Uh, generally speaking, we're kind of in the plan drafts. We're really doing our land cover mapping. I'm going to kind of get into um, covered activities uh, and uh, and all this information is on the website. I'll also show you where, where to find everything and we can dig into it later. Our proposed plan area is the entire county. Uh, um, our permit area is basically anywhere that we actually have lo local control. So uh, for example, Pinnacles, that's a federal park. We don't have control over it, so it can't be part of our permit area. Um, so that's essentially um, around 769,000 acres we're looking at. Um, outreach plan stakeholder lists. Um, so stakeholders. Any individual, group of individuals, organizations, political entity with a stake in the outcome um, of a decision. Um, that's you guys. Uh, the target audience includes a wide range of organizations, agencies, members, and public uh, directly or indirectly impacted by or interested in um, the process. Um, we have formed a public advisory committee. Um, we meet quarterly. Um, we um, have members that are on uh, that committee uh, that, you know, uh, come from a variety of different backgrounds, you, um, whether they're, you know, ag or development or conservation groups or uh, tribes. Or, I mean, we, we have a breadth of different kinds of stakeholders if someone was interested in being a part uh, a more active role or you could just list, listen into those uh, meetings and again they're all posted on on our website and I can show you so an overview of covered activities I'm going to talk a little bit about what it is but I'm really going to kind of hone in on how it's applicable to this district um, so covered activities it's a list of projects or activities in which authorization will be provided um, by U.S. Fish and Wildlife and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife for species addressed in the plan. So our plan, again, is a joint plan. So it's for both federally and state listed species because we have both in our county. Um, it's to be eligible for incidental take authorization activities uh, that must be otherwise lawful, not funded, authorized, or carried out by a federal agency and must be under the direct control or authority of the permittee. So again, if it is a federal waterway, we don't have jurisdiction um, and wouldn't be under this plan. It has to be that we have uh, uh, authority um, uh, over the land. Um, some typical housing, commercial, new infrastructure, roads, pipelines, those could all be covered. Um, the, our kind of process for identifying covered activities. Step one is basically we're identifying the potential covered activities. They include both specific projects and ongoing activities. Ongoing activities is where it really is going to tie into this uh, district. Um, there's a reasonable expectation that covered activity would occur within the permit term of the plan. Our plan um, can range anywhere from 30 to 75 years. So we're looking at approximately maybe a 50 year plan time range. So activities that will be uh, going on, you know, within uh, that time frame. Uh, enough is known to adequately describe the activity and the effect it would have on a covered species um, in, in the habitat in the area. Um, so some of our screening criteria, controller authority, uh, location, timing, 
uh, impact, uh, project definition, practical, uh, about, uh, practic <laughs> thank you. Um, uh, uh, our third step is draft, review, and finalize the list of descriptions. It's an iterative process, it demands um, a high level of input and feedback from county staff, other uh, familiar with the activities and must have enough information on all the covered activities to perform the impact analysis. So this is, um, again, I'll kind of like get into how this applies um, and then also what I'm hoping uh, to um, get uh, from the district or just general members in the public that live in the Pacheco stormwater uh, area. So I'm just gonna skim over other covered activities that don't apply to you guys, but urban projects and rural areas, uh, general rural development, rural uh, infrastructure development, uh, rural operations and maintenance. Um, and now the part that really, uh, uh, in-stream operations and maintenance, and I'm um, sorry, I'm just grabbing this. Um, so basically activities or projects that occur um, or immediately adjacent to streams and adjacent to riparian vegetation that may result in impacts on a stream or canal. Uh, it may include activities at dams, reservoirs, um, and on-stream ponds. So um, uh, examples of in-stream operations, facility maintenance such as trail repair, trash removal, installation of fences, accumulated sediment removal, trail road and culvert repair or placement, and minor bridge repair, storm system maintenance, including clearing outlets to ensure unrestricted stormwater flow. Uh, work may entail trimming vegetation and or clearing sediment around drain outlets, storm damage re repair and flood prevention projects, including uh, drainage improvements. Uh, natural resource protection, such as small bank stabilization projects, restoration to reduce erosion and removal of debris deposited during flooding, uh, small-scale erosion control projects or storm damage prevention projects that do not create new permanent hardship on the creek bank or channel, including temporary flood fighting uh, activities that prevent storm damage. Uh, maintenance of flood protection facilities as armor creeks, bypass channels, levees, access roads, and detention ponds. Operation of flood protection facilities such as detention ponds, bypass channels, and levees. Fish screen installations or removal of fish barriers such as in-stream concrete low flow crossings and culverts. Vegetation management for exotic species removal, such as removal of uh, giant reed and planting of native vegetation. Vegetation management for public safety hazards, including fire management, mosquito control activities, stream gauge station maintenance upstream of reservoirs, stream maintenance for water supply and flood protection, including possible extension of existing regional wetland permits for stream maintenance operation and maintenance of water utility, water supply facilities, including flashboard or inflatable dams, diversion structures, groundwater, recharge ponds, flow gauges, pipeline blow-offs, turnouts, drop structures, weirs, fish ladders, it goes on. Construction or reconstruction of flood protection projects and maintenance of associated access roads along Pacheco Creek, Pajaro River, and San Benito River. Uh, implementation of groundwater sustainable sustainability agency projects and management actions to maintain uh, groundwater uh, sustainability. Um, so essentially, we're in this stage of collecting detailed information of what ongoing activities would be uh, occurring in places such as uh, the Pacheco Creek um, that we should look at covering um, for the term period. Um, and it would essentially provide, by having those covered activities, we then, you know, look at, you know, the next step of, you know, habitat um, and our listed species, so what species are listed and, and um, basically if those activities are covered, um, then, the, then the county can issue take permits 
uh, uh, to those, um, you know, doing those uh, activities. Um, uh, categories of covered activities in also includes conservation strategy implementation, implementing some of the mitigation actions that may result in low levels of take of the covered species that therefore require take authorization. Um, a little bit about agricultural activities, um, as a lot of people within the district um, are farming and uh, ranching, how does this like apply to you? So basically all normal and routine agricultural practices and on conservation easement lands and the reserves. So, so this is an example for YOLO so you, you can see how it, it there these plants are all over the state and actually for the federally listed species habitat conservation plants are all over the country. It's a common uh, uh, practice, but basically management activities to maintain suitable habitat conditions, uh, activities associated with agricultural economic development. Um, so uh, ag is a permitted use. Unless something requires a discretionary action, you don't need a permit. Um, you don't need to take a uh, permit. So um, here's another one from Santa Clara County. Uh, take coverage for routine ag uh, activities on lands uh, within one mile of the reserve system boundaries limited to a subset of covered activities. These are just examples. Um, I talked about our public advisory committee meeting. Our next meeting is until uh, August 30th at three o'clock. Um, uh, the county's contracted um, with ICF and so um, myself with our consultants, uh, you know, are working on this plan. Um, uh, you, the email is sbccp at cosb.us. Um, I'm just gonna click really quick. Uh, hopefully it'll open. So, um, this is the website. It's under planning and land use, um, and everything you want to know about it is on here. And you can kind of go and go and explore. But what I'm hoping to get out of this is basically to introduce some a different effort that's actually going on with the county, and encourage um, those living in the district um, to. Uh, scheduled meetings with myself and my consulting team um, to uh, really describe um, the ongoing maintenance activities in Pacheco uh, Creek that you're um, looking to have occur in the you know for the next 50 years so um, it was just kind of an introduction and um, I like a plea request to please please get in touch with me and and let's talk further about um, how uh, potentially we could look at covering these activities um, uh, for you guys. So that is the end of my presentation. Um, I think I, the only thing I had left was maybe questions. Um, Public I, comment. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, let me see. Uh, Trustee Alfaro, do you have any questions? Not right now. Okay, is there any public comment on this agenda item? There is no public comment. All right, thank you so much for your presentation. Okay, so we are making our way through here. 2.9, report on the Pacheco Stormwater District easement research. Yes, I provided uh, <clears throat> a copy of a, of a map that shows the parcels and the proximate location of the levees. <clears throat> and a uh, number key that uh, indicates um, the easements that apply to each one. <clears throat> I, I don't have uh, it to uh, display on the <clears throat> monitor uh, or a, a PowerPoint to display that, but basically <clears throat> the entire uh, length of the levy on both sides uh, is covered by easements with uh, two parcels uh, uh, exceptions that um, I'm still working on. Um, one involves the Florics uh, who are here tonight and 
we're engaged in an ongoing dialogue uh, to um, resolve uh, that. Uh, apparently, um, uh, Mr. Flark's parents uh, were uh, provided with a, a easement form in 1985, and the legal description that accompanied it was not accurate. Um, it, so it's unsigned and not recorded. And now that we can prepare an accurate legal description, we're in discussions about whether or not uh, to pursue that. Um, and then there's one other parcel that uh, may be involved and we'll, I haven't heard from that property owner yet and we'll follow up on that if, if but fortunately, neither of those properties have any uh, breaches or apparently have uh, debris piles that need to be removed. So it's something we have time to work on. Thank you. Not, well, I mean, you would know. <laughs> what? Well, well, is there debris on your? If I have to tell you, the issue is yes. If if you if there's a a breach or a debris pile on your property and you want the district to address it, then we need to know about it. Well, at some point, at some point, that there needs to be a survey of the entire uh, district. We haven't done that, uh, or, uh, and that would need to be coordinated through uh, Steve's office. Yeah, we're kind of a little off uh, yeah. uh, the agenda in terms of not having these comments uh, uh, on the mic, but um, we'll... Well, yeah, I, I mean, I haven't... Yeah, I haven't, I haven't, I was going to call for the public comment on this agenda item if Joel was finished with his presentation. I, I, I am, and uh, I apologize for not uh, having the graphics available, but uh, it is in the agenda package, and yes. so it, it should be available online for those who can access it. If you, if there are people who would like copies of it, we can... Um, send them to them um yeah, yes we're, we'll call for public comment now on this agenda item so if you would like to uh Hello, Lucinda Flark. Hi, Joel. Uh, my question to you would be: um, I know you mentioned our, us that we're having, we don't have an easement um, uh, contract yet with the Storm District. But um, as a follow-up question, um, how, what's the percentage of, or how many people do you need easement um, uh, grants or uh, something written, and how much, how many more do you need, and who are they? And um, in order for them to, 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 to you know, to follow up and, and go through with what needs to be done. So, do you, you know, are you like 
there, 90% there? Do we only have two more people? Like me and, you know, me and my husband, we were saying, oh, we're waiting on one person or we're waiting on one family. Um, that would be the, kind of like the unknown for me to find out maybe. Well, uh, again, in, in what's attached to the agenda item is a spreadsheet that lists all of the easements and the current property owners for those. Oh, okay. And, um, so they, they, they have that information then? Uh, who, who, who still needs to be? Yes, we have that right? information. And okay. I, I don't, are I you going to able to pull that up? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, if you wanted to see real quick. Yeah. So. Well, I'm kind of like a broad picture kind of person. Well, so we, we've oh, got the, the pictures. No, I mean, uh, like well. percentage wise, we need 90, we well, have 10%, 90% of the people. We have easements, right? We just need two, three more people to sign up. And that there are only good, two, you know? two, two parcels uh, out of all of the ones that are adjacent to the, to the um, uh, levees in the creek okay. right away, and one is so the we'll, we'll floor parcel, and the other is also identified in the list. Okay, I can give you. I have two copies of this, so I can give you the list and the map. If you okay, like. yeah. Um, okay, that'd be good. And then that's all I'm kind of like, I'm just kind of interested in where, what kind of progress we've made. And then uh, maybe um, we can find out when the next, um, when we plan to complete it, you know? Because like we have a little bit of a problem. We don't know why it wasn't signed, why my parents didn't sign it or his parents didn't sign it. So we're kind of like, we don't know what it is. And so we want to investigate that. Okay, th thank you for your comment. Okay, you. um, is there any other public comment on this issue? There is no further public comment. Uh, Trustee Alfaro, did you have any comments or questions? No, I have no comments. Okay. Um, all right, then let's move to the final agenda item, and this has to do with the advice letter from the California Fair Political Practices Commission regarding conflicts of interest. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, so I submitted a request for uh, advice um, regarding the potential conflict of interest and the advice letter, the primary uh, benefit of the advice letter is that there is a specific exception for uh, levy and flood control repairs. So um, that's what we're dealing with currently. And so there, it's an, uh, an exception that would apply and that if there are other types of projects, then, then uh, the uh, letter recommends that we submit, uh, you know, a specific description of the project and, and seek advice on that. But uh, since we don't have any at the current time, I think we're, we're okay for the time being. Right. It's seven and pages, it's very dense, it's difficult to read, uh, even for lawyers. <laughs> so, I, I, uh, yeah, I did, I did skim it. Um, um. But uh, we, we did ask for uh, the advice and we got a response that provides an exemption that uh, that's specific to the type of projects that we're dealing with. So even though uh, two of the trustees have property that include portions of the levees um, and uh, areas that might be repaired, it's uh, not a conflict uh, to uh, pursue those um, given this exemption. Thank you. Um, is there any public comment on this issue? There are no public comments. Trustee Alfaro, do you have any comments or questions? No questions. All right then. Um, the final item is a discussion of future agenda items. Uh, does anyone, uh, Trustee Alfaro, do you have any specific agenda items that you would like on the next agenda? Mm. Not right now. 
think we can uh, add it later. Thank you. Is there public comment regarding future agenda items? We have one um, public comment. I am a resident on Lover's Lane. My name is Judy. And we discussed this at, I think, one of our first meetings when we got together about a neighborhood way of getting everybody informed in our neighborhood, what we're, you know, a suggestion on how to do it. Because we're still getting a lot of people out there that don't know and they, don't, they can't come to the meetings or you can't catch them. But when they have a question and you're outside, they'll stop by and <laughs> and talk to you about it. And half of the time, I, I just listen because I don't have the, the right information, so I won't say anything. But anyway, this is the, a letter I got stuffed into my mailbox one day. And uh, it's a neighborhood notice of neighborhood, all your friends in the neighborhood. And it's a neighborhood letter that says, you know, that if you want to sign up, and they'll put this out. I don't know how often, but it's through an email thing, and you can find out. Or if you prefer this paperwork, somebody's paying for all of this. I don't know who. But one way of us to get in touch with our neighbors on Lover's Lane, because it's not working right now. I mean, a lot of them don't speak English either, so they get their word from whoever, and who knows if it's right. You, know? <laughs> you want right information if you're going to give it out so no one gets mad. You know, so. If you guys are interested, we can take the letter and take a look at it and develop something that works for you and your board. You don't want it? Okay. No, but, uh, you, well, no, because you weren't living there at the time. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this oh, okay. is, this okay. is a, a newsletter that came out sometime. Yeah, before. I, I think we, when we talked about this a uh, couple of months ago, we dis we decided that it was an ad for Nextdoor app, wasn't? Yes, isn't that it was what similar. We, to, yes, it's right. A, it says "Hi, uh, Lovers Lane neighbors." That's how they uh -huh. get your attention. So it's meant just for the people living on Lovers Lane and uh, all the whole street, though, because the the southern end of Lovers Lane, they're high and dry down up there, <laughs> and they don't really know or really care because they're just saying all oh, those poor people but that's all you know so mm -hmm. but the rest of us and those south of the bridge or north of the bridge are worse off you know right so, but okay well th thank you for that yeah, comment so if, if it's okay and anybody's interested we could you as chairman could get together and try something and, and that's just the way i think the county in the very beginning, we had community meetings in 2017 on that flood. Mm, yes. We had community meetings down there on the Sabatini corner. And uh, those, and we had a big group that night. And at the time, our uh, district supervisor, sorry, all done. I remember, thank you, thank you. Thank you. you remember who it was? I do remember, I do. Okay, thank you. Is there any other public comment regarding future agenda items? There are no, oh. there is one more public comment. Okay, I'm uh, Bill Florick. I live on Lover's Lane. Uh, just another item, you know, Stephen mentioned the, about the creek rising up due to sediment buildup. The sediment built up is also as the water goes out and it's going over the floodplain. And what I heard when I was kind of young that the, the, the slope, there's like a one foot slope within about eight miles or something like that. I'm not sure, but I, if you look at the topography maps, there is very little slope out there. So I guess what I want to mention is that there, you know, just something that we need to address as well. It's just the, the floodplain itself, I don't know how that's going to get fixed, but that's something that should be addressed. You know, there's. Again, you know, probably going to uh, hit some nerves here, but there's some rogue uh, people dropping dirt here and there. All that just, you know, in the flood condition, whatever, just flows out and just adds to the floodplain. So all that needs to be uh, needs to be addressed. So I just wanted to bring that up. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, is there any other public comment on this issue, on agenda item? There is no further public comment. 
Okay, well, that brings us to the end of our agenda. Um, is there a motion to end the meeting? I second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. Thank you for attending. This brings our meeting to a conclusion. Thank you. Our next meeting is uh, the last Monday of July. So that would be, Jul or no, I'm sorry, no, it's the fourth Monday. So that would be July 24th. Um, yes, it's a Monday at 6 o'clock. Yes.